So here we're talking about mail and mail servers and mail server technology. There are a few things you need to know. Mail servers and messaging in general has grown a great deal from, the, from when it started. Uh, initially, mail was only internal. Internet has made it possible to send mail to anybody you please. Messaging inside of Linux exists using its own mail server, SendMail being one of them, that automatically runs inside of the Linux environment. If you have a, uh, if you have a Linux system, whether it's a desktop or a server, and you are connected to the internet, doesn't matter if it's high speed or not, if you're connected to the internet, you will be readily be able to send mail right from the command prompt by using the mail command. A few things about mail servers and messaging. Uh, mail servers connect, let me share with you, mail servers have what are known as message transfer, mail transfer agents. And mail transfer agents, or message transfer agents, communicate with other message transfer agents on other servers. Okay, so this can be a link between one mail server and another, if you will. I'm going to highlight this. Well, that's kind of crappy. Let's try that again. So this is a link from one messaging server to another. And right here, you have a mail user agent. Now, mail user agent is really like a mail client, such as Outlook in the case of Linux. I'm sorry, in the, ca in the case of Windows. There's also, of course, uh, mail clients in the Linux world that are referred, that they are known as MUT or Pine. Uh, very, very common mail clients inside of the Linux world. So mail user agent communicates with the mail transfer agent and the mail transfer agent sends a mail over to the other mail server. Now here's the other thing. There's something called a post office on either side. Post office is the one that essentially uh, is responsible for processing these messages. So the mail goes from the mail user agent to the post office, post office to the, to the mail or message transfer agent. From the message transfer agent, it goes over the wire to the other mail server, and then over to the post office, and then over to who the mail was intended for. So let's say that right here, John C. Uh, sent some mail. Over here, Alex T receives mail. All right. So the only way that's going to happen is if the post office knows, okay, the post office has to know, for example, who John C is, and John C has to be a valid user on this post office, and Alex T is going to be a valid user on this post office, all right? And the mail will transfer in this manner. And right over here, right over here, the protocol that is used is SMTP, simple mail transfer protocol, all right? The simple mail transfer protocol is responsible, it's also known as, of course, SMTP, Simple mail transfer protocol is what is responsible for sending your message across. Right over here. And I can point this on this line. Point this on this line, like so. Like my drawings. And here's the SMTP that where well, the mail is going across. Over here, however, where the mail is being received, it can use the post office protocol, POP3, or it can use perhaps the IMAP protocol, Internet Message Access Protocol. All right. It can use POP or IMAP. Now, uh, POP and IMAP are both used to retrieve mail, and they can be used, by the way, by your client, IMAP, post office protocol. All right. So. POP3 and IMAP are a couple of the ways that you can receive mail. SMTP is the primary method of sending mail. All right. 
and then mail gets uh, placed into mail gets placed into the queue so that the user can receive it. Now SMTP is a great protocol. SMTP is a store and forward protocol. In other words, if the message that was sent by John, if the message that was sent by John cannot be received by Alex at that moment in time, the post office will hold on to the message until John, until Alex logs onto the system. Once Alex logs onto the system, the post office will deliver the message to Alex that was sent by John. If John sent a junk message, the post office over here may reject it. And what I mean by a junk message there are certain characteristics that are associated with this post office that can recognize a message as being junk. Maybe this post office will say that if John sent a message to general delivery in this post office and did not specifically address the message to Alex, the post office over here will discard the message as junk. If uh, John sent a message to a user that doesn't exist in this post office, but is on this domain, on this message transfer agent, then John will get a reply back saying that the message was undeliverable. Okay? Some post offices, depending on their security practices, will not discard any messages because they want to keep track of all of the messages that are coming in, whether they mean something or not. There are several institutions that are very, very security uh, concerned. So they want to be certain that they keep all the messages, even junk ones. Post offices today, post offices today inside of the mail environment uh, process a whole lot of mail, millions of messages. And I'm, I think approximately, I, w I don't think I'm too far off, but I think approximately 95 to 97 percent of the messages that this post office addresses, these post offices address, are junk mail. Only about 3 to 5 percent of the messages are really uh, meant for specific people and they mean something. And I'm sure that you are well aware of the fact of messages that mean something and those messages that are of course junk. You, I'm certain, receive junk mail yourself. How, mu how many pieces of mail do you read that comes into your inbox that really means something versus the ones that are junk? So let me uh, save this. I'm going to save this, all right, and let me show you in Linux. I can, I can type mail, and I can send mail to, I can say hello to x at y.com. I can just do that. Press enter. Subject is test. This will not work because the address doesn't exist, I think. <laughs> and I can put a dot to end the message. All right? I can also send a message to uh, hello to Alex T on the system. For example, uh, localhost, hello, this is a test. Does this work? End it. If I type mail, I'm able to see messages and you can see it tells me that, hey, this, this mail system at host, local host, local domain, I'm sorry to inform you that it couldn't receive the message. And it sends me the information about who I'm sending it to, unknown user, hello, <laughs> um, because of the way I'm thinking I'm going to delete this. All right, let me take a look at the second message. Sorry to tell you this, but this message doesn't exist. Uh, hello user does not exist. Delete this. Now I'm going to go to and log in as Alex T. And I'm going to put in mail here. Eh, I don't really get mail sitting here. And exit out of this. Let me make sure that. All right. So looking at mail, just by typing in mail and the mail command, and I want to send a message. Now I can also send a message to the I can send an entire message with an attachment if I want to as well. Okay? I can send an entire message as an attachment. All I have to do is I can specify mail, hello, Alex T at local host, uh, local domain, and I can 
um, send demo.txt, for example. Of course, the file doesn't exist in this particular instance. Let me make sure host file. There you go. So I sent the host file to that address. Of course, I've got a problem because in this case, um, it couldn't send it, but this got an unknown user called AlexT in this particular instance on the system. But I'm able to, and here's the attachment that I sent, you know, of the, uh, of the local host file. Okay. So I can send attachments, and by the way, this is readily working. If I send it to a valid message, a valid uh, user, um, this message would be sent. Okay. It would not be a problem at all. So uh, I'm able to send messages, I'm able to read messages using mail, uh, and I'm able to send attachments using the mail message, and I can grab a, um, a utility, a utility, a mail client, such as Mutt or Pine, which is available inside of the Linux environment, uh, readily available, and it's free, that I'm able to take a look at and read and process messages as I choose. Very, very simple mail system. And it's, and it's completely working and functional. You can send messages to internal users, and you can send messages to people that are outside of the organization as well.